Trucks can be a lot of fun. You can haul your friends around in them, or you can haul your new boat behind them, or you can just haul ass. Trucks are extremely versatile, but there's a few that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. So your boy Brad Danger is gonna show you five trucks and an honorable mention that you'll most likely haul to the scrapyard before you're done with them. So are you ready? Cause I am, let's go. <laughs> They started making Chevy Colorados in the early 2000s, and you can pick them up for cheap. Just check out this one for 2,500 bucks. Wait, zoom back in on that photo. Are you kidding me? Look at that rust. Ugh. And that's only one of the problems with these early Colorados. They like to rust. Not only would the bodies rust, but also the frames. Now we may have to cut Chevy a little bit of slack because this was their first crack at the Colorado, but promise me that it will be somebody else's problems because these things were riddled with problems. So you could get them in either rear wheel drive or four wheel drive with both a manual and automatic transmission. Plus you could get the 2.8 liter as standard or the more powerful 3.5 liter. Now the big issue was that these engines just weren't reliable. And the check engine light would come on so much that if it wasn't on, you'd wonder if it was burnt out. Yeah, one of the biggest issues with these engines were misfires. Now, these were most likely due to the worn valve seats, which in some cases would reduce power. There was also a lot of faulty electrical issues, with the worst one being the AC blower not working because of a failed resistor. And that's just the beginning. If that's not enough to scare you, then I don't know what is. Because if you still wanna buy an early model, it's gonna cost you more than the purchase price real quick with all the repairs you're gonna have to do. Ford trucks and V8s is like peanut butter and jelly. It just goes together. I like peanut butter more than jelly, but yeah. Do you like peanut butter or jelly more? Let me know down in the comments. But there was a time, actually like a 10 year span, that the Ford 5.4 liter V8 just wasn't up to snuff. Yeah, these engines seemed like a really good idea because they had the innovative three valve cylinder head that put down all the power. But here's the thing, that engine had more issues than your ex-girlfriend. But I'm just gonna touch the surface with five of the main issues with that Triton V8. The first is the fuel pump driver module will fail, which cuts gas to the engine and essentially turns off the car. Yeah, this can happen anywhere. And if it were to happen on, let's say the freeway, well, that's not a good spot to have absolutely no power. The second is the Triton V8 actually will blow spark plugs. Yes, literally blow them out of the engine. And since this is an aluminum engine, it'll completely strip the spark plug socket and so getting a new one in there is gonna be extremely difficult and costly ask me how I know well not never mind yeah and not only that but when you try to remove a spark plug they often snap in half good luck getting out the other piece the fourth issue is that they're notorious for developing oil pan gasket leaks and last but not least are the cam phaser problems if you have any issues you have to replace the unit with a brand new one which is pricey now unfortunately the f-series trucks from ford aren't the only trucks that were actually affected by these engines. Yeah, Ford put them in the Ford Expeditions, the Ford Explorers, the Mercury Mountaineers, even the Ford Mustangs, Lincoln LTs, and the Lincoln Navigators. So if you're looking for any of those cars or trucks from the mid 2000s, buyer beware. I guess Ford stands up to its name, right? Fix or repair daily. Real quick, if you're curious to see what the other half of this t-shirt looks like, which it is a really cool ideal tee, go click up here and go check it out yourself. And if you wanna support the channel, go snag one or snag a couple and help us keep creating this ideal content. Because the next truck on this list that you shouldn't buy is the Dodge Dakota. The Dakota is slightly smaller than its full-size brother, the Dodge Ram. And although it's smaller in stature, it has impressive towing capacity. And the ones that you really wanna stay away from are the ones built from 2000 to 2006, which in 2000 was the first year of the Dakota quad cab, which was quite the concept back then. And it seems like any truck that you buy today has four doors. So it was actually a really good idea. But to make room, it only has a five foot three inch bed, which won't hold everything that a normal pickup truck would. So if you're gonna be hauling bigger items, then a mid-sized truck just doesn't make much sense for you. Now, a lot of these Dakotas were sold with the V6 engine, which not only drank a ton of gas, but it also hampered the Dakota from being a truck. Not only would the exhaust manifold bolts break, but also the cam sensor failure would go out, which means you either wouldn't be able to start the truck or 
while you're driving it would just stall out. And the second issue, which isn't even the worst issue, is that Dodge owners would do dodgy things. And a lot of times they wouldn't stay up on maintenance. And without regular maintenance, these engines were prone to oil sludge buildup, which uh, leads to engine failure and means you need a new motor. But like I said, that wasn't even the worst thing about these Dodge Dakotas because the brakes would straight up fail. And by fail, I mean that they would lock up at random. Yeah, that's the kind of rig I wouldn't even put my worst enemy in. And although they're pretty cool looking and relatively affordable, I really think the best thing to do is just a hard pass on the Dodge Dakota. It might just be me, but the Chevy Avalanche was the ultimate bro truck. Just look at this thing. It's like they took a Chevy Suburban, lopped off the back, threw it down a hill and caused an avalanche. Wait. I don't think that's how they came up with the name. But Chevy did come up with their own class for this thing. They called it a sport utility truck. And it's the first and last of its kind, which is a good thing. Cause I don't even know if this thing actually qualifies as a truck. And here's the thing. There's several issues with this sport utility truck that you just don't want to deal with. The early models had problems with the paint on the cladding, which is definitely an issue if it's your bro truck. And a huge problem was that actually the speedometers would malfunction. And not only could police officers see this monstrosity coming from a million miles away, but then you're going too fast because the speedometer doesn't work. Yeah, you either get a ticket for speeding or you get a ticket from the taste police. And then there was a plethora of problems with the engine and transmission. Yeah, early models suffered from complete transmission failures. And Later engines used to drink oil like it was their job. So I don't care how cool you think you are, definitely pass on the Chevy Avalanche. And now it's time for that honorable mention, baby. Now real quick, let's ask the ideal question of the day. What is your favorite truck? I mean, is it the SRT 10 or is it the Shelby? What is it, the Shelby F-150? Or are you a simple guy and like the Ford Raptor? Let us know down in the comments what the ideal question of the day answer is. What is your favorite truck? All right, let's chat about this honorable mention because I bet it's not one of your favorite trucks and it made it on this list. We're talking about the Chevy SSR and it was designed in the early 2000s when retro styling was all of the rage. Now SSR stands for Super Sport Roadster and in theory, it seems really cool. Yeah, you take an SUV platform and you shoehorn a Corvette V8 in it. And not only that, but one of the trickiest things by far was the full down hardtop. Just look at this thing. And that Corvette motor, that V8 that's under the hood, pushes out 400 horsepower and it sounds intoxicating. <laughs> In theory, this is the modern hot rod that everybody should have been running to their dealerships to buy. And yet, that couldn't have been further from the truth. First, the cabin was so tight, it barely fit two passengers. And something that you want in a truck is to be able to haul both cargo and other people. And two passengers just isn't gonna cut it. Plus, straight up, this thing just isn't a truck. Plus, as my mom's always told me, looks can be deceiving. And although this thing has the silhouette of a truck, the truck bed is less than usable. Yeah, this thing isn't gonna carry any of your Ikea furniture home and it hauls next to nothing. The SSR is simply not a truck. And kind of like the Avalanche, it's in its own class, but it's a class that you just don't want to even look at. When a new design comes out, you usually say, that thing's ahead of its time, but not the case with the Nissan Frontier. Here's the all new design for 2005, and it's Nissan's version of a mid-sized pickup truck. And yeah, I get it, it's pushing 15 years old now, but this is a 2005 Silverado, and it looks way newer. But remember, it's what's on the inside that counts. And well, the Frontier sucked. This generation of Frontier had transmission issues that were longer than my wish list for Christmas. And if you don't have a transmission, you have no go-go. And not only that, but the radiator had a design flaw. So when it cracked, coolant would spew into the transmission. And let's just say that when coolant and transmission fluid mix, yeah, there's no coming back from that and it will completely detonate your transmission. So with that in mind, you should probably choose an option that will give you less trouble down the road. And you know what's a good option? These five sleeper trucks that you never want to race against or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose. And as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.